Hi, this is Beersborn, and welcome back to Game Design. In this tutorial, we're going to continue our side-scrolling game that we started in the last video. What we have so far is a player character, and a camera, and some ground, and then a handful of different layouts and event sheets for different levels. What we're going to add in this video is a couple different enemy types. We're going to start with an enemy that just runs across the screen, just moves from the right side to the left side of the screen. And then we'll make a second enemy type that can follow a pattern, so we can make it run back and forth or jump up on a platform. To start with, I'm going to go over to my test layout. This is the layout where we're putting all of our objects. Uh, not necessarily a playable level that the player will see, but somewhere where we can store all of our stuff. And let's start by inserting a new object. It's going to be a sprite. I'm going to call this enemy one. Now we're just using temporary sprites for everything right now. So you can just draw, I'm just gonna draw anything. It doesn't matter what it looks like too much. Uh, we'll make something better looking later. I'm gonna draw a little enemy. There it is. I'm gonna shrink that down a little bit. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this enemy a behavior. I'm gonna use the same behavior I used on my player character. So I'm gonna to go to behaviors, add new behavior. I'm gonna add the platform behavior. Platform allows an object to move left and right and to jump. We have all these settings over here. Now, one thing on the settings, we'll revisit these once we have our enemy kind of set up, but for now I would uncheck the default controls box. If that's checked, then by default, the arrow keys will control this object and we don't want the player to be able to control the enemy. So I'm gonna uncheck that box. Now. If you hit play, nothing's going to happen. Our enemy is just going to sit there. And the reason why is we have to tell Construct to make our enemy move in a certain direction, in this case, left. So I'm going to go over to my core event sheets. Whenever we have events that we want to have true across the entire game, we're going to put it in our core event sheet. And since we want this enemy to work on multiple levels, that's where we're going to put the events. So I'm going to add a new event. The event is going to be, we want this to happen all the time, right? Our enemies are always going to move from the right to the left. So if you want something to happen constantly, we can find under system, every tick. Every tick just means always. So every tick, we can add an action, go to our enemy, and since we gave it the platform behavior, we should see the platform actions here. One of the options is simulate control. So if we want it to move towards the left, just set it to left. So this event, it'll always move to the left. Let's hit play and try it out. Great. I'm going to give a little bit more space to the ground here so it can move across. Excellent. Now we can add as many enemies as we want. If I click and drag more enemy ones from the right side, I can add a set of enemies and they'll move across the space. But what if we want an unlimited stream of enemies? Like what if we want enemies to keep spawning and moving across the level? What we're going to do is we're going to create an enemy spawner, something that's going to make enemies keep popping out. One way we could do that is by inserting another new object. So I'm going to click Insert New Object. It's going to be a sprite again. I'm going to call this Enemy 1 Spawn. You can call it whatever you want, Enemy 1 Portal or something. The name doesn't matter as long as you know what it is. And I'm going to draw, again, this is just temporary, so I'm just going to do a little, um, I'll do a little, a little door here. And that's what my enemy ones are going to come out of. So I'm going to put that over here on the ground. And um, I'm going to go over to the core events and I'm going to add a new event. And I'm going to think about this. Uh, the purpose of this event is that enemy ones are going to pop out of the enemy one spawn. And I want to have it happen every so many seconds. Whenever we have something that we want to have happen at a set amount of time, we can find that under system and then down at the bottom time. One of the options is every X seconds. So I can say, okay, every, every two seconds, for example, I'll add an action. I can have my enemy one spawn, spawn another object, and that object will be an enemy one. Now for layer and image point, let's not worry about those yet. Go ahead and click done. So every two seconds, an enemy one spawn will spawn an enemy one. Let's hit play and try it out. Every two seconds, an enemy pops out. Perfect. 
So now if you want to have a constant steady stream of enemies, you can use the enemy one spawn. We could also do other stuff like you can randomize this. If you want it to be a little bit less consistent, you could type in the word random and then in parentheses, first the lowest random number. So like the lowest amount of seconds, maybe one, and then a comma and the highest amount of seconds, maybe three. So this will pick a random time between one and three seconds. And that'll make it a little bit less, uh, a little bit less consistent and maybe feel a little bit more organic. Great. So that's enemy one. Let's think about a more complex enemy though. If I want an enemy that's going to jump up on a platform, or maybe let's start simple. Let's have an enemy that just moves back and forth from left to right on a platform. You can do that too. So I'm gonna right click, insert a new object, and this is gonna be an enemy two. So I'm gonna to go to Sprite, call this guy enemy two. Click insert, click anywhere, and then let's draw a second enemy type. I'm going to do, again, doesn't have to look good. I'm going to do a little spiky guy. Okay. And just like with enemy one, we want to give it the same behavior. We're going to give it the platform movement behavior so we can tell it to move left and right and to jump in this case. So I'm going to go over to behaviors, add new behavior and platform. Now, just like with enemy one, I want to uncheck the default controls because again, we don't want our player to be able to control the enemy with the arrow keys. So uncheck that box. Now what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna create a set of instance variables. And we're gonna say whenever the variable is equal to, let's say left, it goes left. And whenever the instance variable is equal to right, it goes right. Um, and to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna use a new type of instance variable that we haven't looked at before. So click on instance variables, add new instance variables. I'm gonna name this direction. And for the type, we have these three options, right? We've done Boolean. Boolean is like a true false statement number is any number, we're going to try using string. What string means, it's just words. You can have it set to any word you want. So for example, the initial value, I could say, let's make the initial value left and click OK. So now the direction, the value of this instance variable is the word left. And I can go over to my core event sheets and I can add an event that says when enemy two go down to the instance variables. I can compare. I'm going to say when the direction variable is equal to, and then if you delete one of the quotation marks, a list of all your options pops up. We only have the word left so far. So I'm going to say left, left in quotation marks. So when that variable is equal to left, then I'll add an action, go to enemy two, go down to my platform section and simulate control moving left. So whenever it's set to left, it'll simulate control left. And that should work, moves to the left. But what if we wanted to change and move to the right? To do that, we're gonna create a set of triggers. They're gonna be like little invisible signs. Uh, well, they'll be visible to us, but invisible to the player. And when the enemy touches one of the signs, it'll tell it to go either left or right, or maybe jump. So let's put one of those in. This is gonna be another object insert new object, it's going to be a sprite, and I'm going to call this right trigger. Right trigger. And what that means is it's going to be the object that triggers my enemy to move to the right. Now this is something that our player's never going to see. It's going to be invisible to them. So you can make it look however you want. What I'd recommend doing is maybe just a square with an arrow to the right. That way it's easy for me as the game designer to know that this is going to be the thing that tells my enemy to move in that direction. So I have this little square here with a right arrow. That's my right trigger. And I can go over to my core events and I can say when enemy two touches the right trigger, then I'm going to switch the instance variable to make direction equal right. So let's add event. We're going to say when enemy two on collision with another object, Click to choose, right trigger, and add action. 
when they collide, enemy two will go to the instance variables and we can set the value of the direction to the word right. And click done. So when direction is equal to left, it simulates moving to the left. But when it collides with the right trigger, it'll set the direction to right. Now, if you try this out, it's not actually gonna move right yet. It'll just stop once it hits that, that square. And the reason why is, although we've told it to change the instance variable to right, we haven't told Construct what to do when the direction variable becomes right. We have to do an event like this, where it says when the direction is equal to right, simulate control pressing right. So let's add that event. When enemy two, compare instance variable, when direction is equal to right in quotation marks, then add action, enemy two, and simulate control under the platform section, right. Click done and try it out. Perfect. So he moves to the left until he touches the trigger and then he goes to the right. Now let's make another one of these, but in this one, it's gonna have an arrow pointing to the left and it'll tell the enemy to move back to the left. So I'm gonna insert another new object, Sprite. I'm gonna call this left trigger. And again, just keep it simple. Something like this with an arrow to let me know that this makes the enemy move to the left. And I'm gonna stick that right over here on this edge. Now over my core events, I have to do an event that says when my enemy two touches the left trigger, set the direction variable to the word left. So let's add event, enemy two, on collision with another object, left trigger, the action will be enemy two, set value, of direction to left. Let's try that out. Perfect, it works. So it's these four events telling the enemy two to change its variable from right to left, and when it's right, goes right, when it's left, it goes left. Now, we don't want the player to see the triggers. We can make these invisible, and the easiest way to do that is just to click on one of the triggers here, like say, the right trigger, scroll down a little bit to the bottom of the properties window on the left, and you'll see this option here, initially visible. If you have that box unchecked, then as soon as the game starts, you won't see this object. We can still see it in construct, which is nice for us because we can move these things around, but the player will never see it. So I'm gonna do the same thing for the other trigger too. Click on it once, go down to the bottom of the left panel, initially visible, unchecked. Hit play, try that out. Looks good. Now we can also adjust the speed of these enemies for enemy one or enemy two. You can adjust the max speed over in its platform behavior. You can also change stuff like its acceleration, deceleration, um, and you can make it kind of feel however you want that enemy to feel. Now let's add a jump in. I'm gonna make it so this enemy can, let's say the enemy starts here. I'm gonna get rid of this enemy one for now. Stick them over here. And I'm gonna say my enemy two is going to move this way and then jump up on the platform and then come back down. To do that, I have to make a trigger to tell the enemy two when to jump. So let's insert a new object, Sprite. I'm gonna call it Jump Trigger. Just like before, just a simple box. I'm gonna do an arrow pointing up in this case to let me know that this makes a jump. And I'm gonna make a jump right there. Now we could, there's different ways we could do this. Um, you might think like, oh, let's do it the same way we did with these ones. So I might make an instance variable for my enemy too that, uh, that'll tell it when to jump. We can actually keep it simpler. It'll work if you just tell it whenever it touches this thing, just simulate the jump. You know, as soon as it contacts the uh, jump trigger, just make it push the jump button basically. So if I go over to my core events, I can add an event. I can go to enemy two. I can say on collision with another object, jump trigger, 
So the condition is when it hits the jump trigger, then the action will be enemy two, simulate control, jump. And that should work. Let's try it out. It does. Gets this far, goes back, hits it, jumps again. Now you might have to make some adjustments to the properties. Like for example, if you needed to jump higher, you can increase the jump strength. So I'm just picking a random number there. Let's try that out. It works. Now, one of the reasons why we did it this way, the reason why we made the whole instance variables with the left and right, and we didn't have to do that with the jump, is because the jump just has to be pressed once, right? So as soon as it touches the trigger, it presses the jump key, that's great. But for these, if we had it set up the same way, so as soon as it touched the left trigger, it just uh, moved to the left once, it would only move one pixel and then stop because it has to know that it has to continually move to the left the entire time the variable is set to left or it should be continuously simulating platform pressing right the entire time the variable is set to right. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna add one more thing here. If I test out the way I have it now, he jumps, comes over here, touches the other trigger. Maybe I don't want it to jump on the way back, right? It's kind of weird that it jumps up when it's not, not trying to get on top of that platform. So maybe I'll do something a little bit different here. Maybe instead of just one jump trigger, I'll have two jump triggers. One that jumps when you're moving in from the right, and one that jumps when you're moving in from the left. This is a little bit more complicated, but it's still the same basic idea. I'm gonna insert a new object. It's gonna be a sprite. I'm gonna call this, um, I'm gonna call this right jump trigger. It's when the character will be jumping to the right. And uh, same thing. Just a simple box. I'm gonna make an arrow, in this case, moving up to the right. And uh, maybe I'll make another one while I'm here. Insert new object, sprite, left jump, trigger. White arrow, in this case, pointing up to the left. Cool. Now, I wanted to jump up when it hits this one, right? I'll put this over here for now. And uh, let's go over to our core events. And let's say, at an event, when our enemy two on collision with another object, and let's do the left jump trigger for this. So when our enemy two touches the left jump trigger, we'll add action, go to our enemy two, and simulate control jump. Just like before, right? And this will work, but we don't want it to jump when it's moving from the left. When my enemy two is moving in from this side, that's when it should jump up. If it's moving in from the left side, it should not jump, it'll walk right through it. So what I can do is add a second condition over here on the left side. I'm gonna double click on that left tab, and we're gonna go to enemy two, and we're gonna compare X down here at the bottom. Compare X means comparing the left to right location of two things. So if our enemy two has a higher X number than our trigger, that means they're on the right side of the screen. X is zero at the left, and it's usually about 1920 on the right, depending on your resolution. So zero on the left, 1920 on the right. So if my enemy's X is greater than the X coordinate of my left jump trigger dot X, what this means is it's testing to see if my enemy is on the right side and my left jump trigger is on the left. Now this will only happen when both of these conditions are met. Not only does it have to touch the trigger, but it has to be moving in from the right side. Let's try that out. Jumps up, comes back down, moves right through it. Perfect. Let's do the same thing again for the other trigger. We have this right jump trigger. So I'm gonna add an event. I'm gonna say when my enemy two on collision with another object, in this case, right jump trigger, and I wanna add an action, tell my enemy two to simulate control jump. I'm gonna add a second condition over here on the left side. I wanna to go to my enemy two 
and compare X. I'm gonna compare the X location. And in this case, I wanna say when it is less than, which means my enemy two is gonna be over here on the left side and my trigger is gonna be on the right side. The right jump trigger dot X. Perfect. So when they collide, if the enemy is on the left side and the right jump trigger is on the right side, then it jumps. If it's not, it won't jump. So I can add another ground, like maybe I'll throw another platform over here. And I'll say, okay, my enemy will move this way, it'll jump up, and then maybe it'll get to the end of the platform over here, and then jump up to the right, come up here, maybe fall down onto this platform, and then add another trigger here, and it'll come back down and then jump up again. So you can make some pretty complex systems, some complex patterns for your enemies to move in. Great. Now, the last thing we should do is we should make these jump triggers invisible. So I'm gonna click on my right jump trigger, go down to the bottom on the left, uncheck the initially visible box. I'm gonna do the same thing for my left jump trigger. And now it should be totally invisible to the player and it looks like the enemy is just moving on their own. Great, we'll leave it there today. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to save your project before you close it and uh, we'll continue next time. Bye.